Hello, in this video I will be talking about high blood pressure and breast cancer. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, so there's always something new to watch. And you can go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. So what is high blood pressure? What causes it? Can breast cancer treatments cause high blood pressure? And what can you do to reduce your risk and your blood pressure itself? So blood pressure is the force of the blood from your heart against your blood vessels, in particular the arterial side, the arteries of your body. High blood pressure can lead to heart disease, it can lead to cognitive problems, stroke. There are a whole host of things that can result from high blood pressure. I'm not going to go into all of those, but if you have questions, you can drop that in the comment section below. So high blood pressure, well, we measure blood pressure using usually a blood pressure cuff that can go on the arm. There are even some that go on the wrist and some that go on the finger. The best ones are on the arm and they compress the brachial artery, which is in this part of the arm. As the blood pressure cuff lets out the pressure, two numbers come up. The top one is called the systolic blood pressure and that's the pressure in the arterial mm. system when the heart is contracting, so when the heart is squeezing. The bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure, and that's the pressure against the blood vessels when the heart's in its relaxation phase. That's the lower number. Now, the guidelines for blood pressure in the United States have changed, and we used to say 120 over 80 was a great blood pressure. If you have risk factors for heart disease or neurologic problems, we want it even lower than that. Now I know some of you watching have really low blood pressure and get lightheaded. That's a different thing. We're just talking about a normal blood pressure, lower is better. So we like to see a top number, for example, under 110 and the lower number around 60 or so. So a lot more people are being diagnosed with high blood pressure than used to, and it's not because of things in our environment or what we're eating, so though certainly those can play a role, but because the evidence supports a lower blood pressure being better. So high blood pressure, as I mentioned, over the long term has some serious health consequences and all over the world is undertreated, whether one has breast cancer or not. One thing that I've noticed is that people with breast cancer get to see physicians more often or have to see physicians more often, including their primary care doctors and their blood pressure actually becomes something people notice more just because they're interacting with the health system more. One thing you can do is get a home blood pressure cuff. Sometimes insurance will cover this or if you have money set aside through a flexible spending account or a healthcare savings account, you can get these paid for. You might be able to pick up one that somebody no longer needs or you can borrow one for a while to monitor your own blood pressure. Targeted therapy has been associated with a risk of higher blood pressure like trastuzumab, the brand name of which is Herceptin, or Bevacizumab, the brand name of which is Avastin. And there are actually quite a few medications used in treatment of metastatic breast cancer that can cause not just high blood sugar, but also hypertension. And being monitored and following and taking this seriously is important. Now, it, let's say you're watching this, you don't have breast cancer, but you're watching it because somebody you love does have breast cancer. This would be an invitation for you to take a look at your blood pressure as well, because as I mentioned, it's undertreated nearly everywhere in the world. This is a big gap in quality of care, whether one has breast cancer or not. What are some other things you can do without medication to help your blood pressure? Well, avoiding salt, which is much easier said than done, is important. There was a recent study that took the same people and had them on a two grams a day or 2,000 milligram a day sodium diet and then switched them over to a 500 milligram sodium diet and took other people on a 500 milligram sodium diet and switched them to the two gram sodium diet. And it looks as though that change decreased blood pressure just as much as being on a medication. So that's impressive. 
The problem is 500 milligrams of sodium is really hard to meet. There is sodium in natural foods and in packaged food and in prepared foods and don't even talk about going out to eat. There's so much salt in food made at restaurants. It is nearly impossible to follow a 500 milligram sodium diet. These studies often prepare meals for the participants, and then the participants don't eat anything else, nothing in their natural surroundings, just the special study diet. So yes, it's exciting, yes, it's promising, but how do we implement that in the real world? So sodium is one thing. Sodium substitutes for flavoring can be really helpful if you find that you're on a lot of sodium. And some people don't respond to a low sodium diet. It's not the answer for everybody. What about exercise? Exercise has been shown to be associated with a decrease in blood pressure. A recent large study, it was a meta-analysis where multiple studies put together, looked at high intensity interval training, endurance training, and isometric exercises. And it looks like isometric exercises, which I'll describe in just a moment, were most effective at reducing blood pressure. So isometric exercises are exercises where your muscle length stays the same. So a wall squat where you up, up against the wall, bend your knees and then lower yourself. So you're holding your body up with your lower legs. You'll notice some trembling at first if your muscles get tired and if your knees don't feel good when you do this, this won't work for you. But if you want to try isometric exercises, you can do two minutes of a squat, two minutes rest, two minutes of a squat and do it for a total of eight minutes. So four different times you're doing the two minute squats. This can be challenging. Once you get better and better at it, you'll wanna lower your body even more and that will make the intensity higher for you. Other isometric exercises include planks where you're down on the floor as if in a push-up position and you're holding yourself up on your arms or you can lower yourself onto your elbows and do that for a couple minutes and have somebody watch to make sure your body's straight. You'll have to build up because these things are hard. So that's isometric exercises. You will hear things like stop smoking. Smoking increases blood pressure and has other effects on the cardiovascular system that along with hypertension are just really bad for your heart and your blood vessels and your brain. Avoiding alcohol in some people helps lower blood pressure, but not in everybody. There are other reasons to avoid alcohol or limit it. You might wanna check out our video about alcohol and breast cancer. Other things that may help include stress reduction. So whether that's meditation, managing difficult emotions, over time, that's been shown to be associated with a decrease in blood pressure and heart rate and overall cardiovascular health for many people. For some people, it's just not their thing and that's okay. So let's say you try all of those things. You maintained a healthy weight, you've limited salt, you've, you're doing isometric and other exercises, avoiding alcohol, quitting smoking, and you just can't get your blood pressure down. At that point, starting on a medication is probably the right thing to do and don't wait too long. You know, you can give yourself a few months to lower your blood pressure, but what you don't wanna do is be undertreated. Now, I know a lot of you have commented, now you're on one medicine to counteract another medicine, yes. And if you were not hypertensive before you went on treatment and now you are, there's going to be some feelings about that. You're gonna be angry and frustrated and disappointed and you're gonna be puzzled, was it all worth it? So I, I know that comes up. I've seen that in the comments that you so generously put in our comment section after our videos. What I have found is that most people already were on the borderline for high blood pressure and that now that they're on one of these medications, we track it more, we notice it, we see that it's persistent and sustained. So if you're offered a medication, remember just like with any medicine, you don't have to stay on it forever. You can go from one medicine and try it and switch to another. Antihypertensive medications are relatively inexpensive. So there are very many that are off brand now, so you don't have to be on a brand name. Your primary care doctor can manage your blood pressure. They're actually more trained and more up to date on managing high blood pressure than most oncologists 
There are specialists, cardio-oncologists, who if you have other heart problems after, during cancer, can help manage your blood pressure as well. I know I've covered a lot from what high blood pressure is and how we measure it and what you can do to try to limit this from happening, the medications that cause it, and then a little bit about medications as well. If this has been helpful, click like. That will help other people who have these exact questions find this. Subscribe to our channel. That'll help you see our new content. Go to yerba.com for your personalized report. And you can always comment or write questions below. We get back to you just as soon as we can. Thank you so much for watching.